Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another art class with your teacher, Mr. Young. And for this week, we will be doing something new. So make sure you do finish up your last week's project and that you turn it into me. So that way I can see all of your awesome mandala color wheels. And we will be starting with a new project today. So let's go ahead and get started with our video. So here for today's agenda, we will be talking about Hispanic Heritage Month. And then we will learn about a famous Mexican artist named Frida Kahlo. And later on at the end of this video, make sure you stick around to watch my step-to-step, step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can create your own project. Now let's watch this quick video which will introduce us to Hispanic Heritage Month. What is Hispanic? Traces back to our great grandparents. They came here for a better future. We come from different parts of the world. I am from Chile and El Salvador. I'm Mexican. Guatemala. I'm Dominican. I'm Argentina. I'm Hispanic. And I guess Latina. <laughs> we have really, really good food. I like mango. Lots of tamales. The pupusas. I can eat four tacos. Chili chili is my favorite. Hamburgers too. <laughs> All that food needs a celebration. We have the most wonderful. The reyes mambo. Three kings day. <laughs> I want to be a dance team. A firefighter. I want to be a scientist. Professional soccer player. I love singing. I like to roller skate. My dream is a reality. I can be anything. Our culture he unites us. us. Our music is beautiful. It makes me want to dance all the time. I don't eat glitz. I speak Spanish and English. I love to draw and paint. I love dogs. I'm outgoing. I'm happy. This is my hair. This is my heritage. That's me. Eso soy That's me. Eso soy yo. That's me. Yo. That's me. All right, now that we watched that quick video, let's talk about Hispanic Heritage Month a little bit more. If you don't know, this is an annual celebration, meaning that we celebrate it every single year here in the U.S. of the his history, culture, and achievements of the American, Latinx, and Hispanic communities. Um, and that just refers to anyone in the U.S. who are from or who have family from Spanish-speaking countries or from other countries in Latin America. And it began in 1968 when President Lyndon B. Johnson declared a Hispanic Heritage Week and it expanded to a full month by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 and we've been celebrating it every year since then. And we celebrate it during this time of September 15th through October 15th. And that is because the, there are really important dates in between September 15th and October 15th that we want to celebrate. So that includes all the independence days of many Latin American countries and also Dia de la Raza or Day of the Race in Latin America. So on September 15th, 1821, five countries including Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua all gained their independence. And on September 16th, 1810 is when Mexico gained their independence. And September 18th, 1810 is when Chile gained their independence from Spain. So all of these countries celebrate their Independence Day really close in dates. So that's why we celebrate it in September, in mid-September. And we also extended Hispanic Heritage Month all the way to October 15th. And that is because we wanted to include October 12th, which is Dia de la Raza, or Day of the Race, which is celebrated in Latin America to celebrate all of the diversity of people. And now we're going to break down the word Hispanic and Latino and Hispanic refers to people from Spanish speaking countries from anywhere in the world so any country where they mainly speak Spanish is referred to as Hispanic where Latino which is also sometimes called Latina or Latinx refers to people from Latin American countries so that's all of the countries south of the US including Mexico and all of the countries south of Mexico and in South America. And here are here's a little diagram or a 
picture of all of the different countries that speak Spanish. And so if you have any family from these countries, you might be considered Hispanic or you might call yourself Latino or Latina. And that just refers to your culture. And now that we understand that and why we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, we're going to explore further into a famous Mexican artist named Frida Kahlo. If you haven't heard of her yet, I'm sure you will plenty of times throughout your lifetime because she is an icon. She is known all over the world for being one of the most famous artists for her paintings. So here are two photographs of her. Here is one in color where she is dressed in these bright colors and she always likes to have these flowers in her hair. In our next photo, here is a picture of her when she was sick and she had to stay in bed to heal and because of that, she has a special easel where she can still paint while she is lying in bed. So let's watch this next video, which will learn, which we will learn more about Frida Kahlo's life. Frida Kahlo. She is one of Mexico's greatest artists, and she is the queen of selfies, painting mostly self-portraits. She was born Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderón in Coyoacán, Mexico City, Mexico, on July 6, 1907. Frida is one of four children, so she has two older sisters named Matilda and Adriana, and a younger sister named Cristina. Frida's whole life was filled with misfortune and very bad health. At the age of six, she contracted a dangerous disease called polio, which can cause horrible muscle pain, infection in the spine and the brain, paralysis or weakness, and even death. Frida was bedridden for over nine months. Her right leg grew differently than her left, visually being much smaller than the other. Because of this, Frida would wear trousers and long skirts for the rest of her life. After she recovered from her illness, Frida was encouraged by her father to play lots of sports, which was very uncommon for a girl at this time. Frida dreamed of becoming a doctor, so in 1922 she attended the National Preparatory School. It was a school with only 35 female students. She became super popular for her bravery and outspokenness. She made new friends with very similar political views as her. During this time, Mexico was going through a huge revolution, which had a drastic effect on her identity. Frida met a famous artist named Diego Rivera, who was painting a mural at the school. She absolutely fell in love, but he was 21 years older than her. She moved on not knowing that she would one day end up marrying this man. So remember when I said that Frida's life was filled with misfortune? Well, then it happened one day completely changed her life forever. In 1925, she was catching a bus with her high school sweetheart, Alejandro Gomez Arias. She realized that she lost her umbrella and got off to search for it. They both ended up getting on another bus, and as they were riding it, the driver decided to try and pass an electric streetcar. The other driver didn't realize the intentions of the bus and crashed right into the side of it. It dragged for a number of feet and crashed again, hitting a huge corner of a building. Frida was immediately thrown down by the force of the accident. Several passengers were killed instantly, and others died later from the injuries. Miraculously, Frida and Alejandro survived, but Frida was severely injured. 
An iron handrail went straight through her pelvis. Kalo's pelvic bone had been fractured and the rail had punctured her abdomen and uterus. Her spine had been broken in six places, her right leg in 11 places, her collarbone was broken, and her shoulder was dislocated. It was incredible that she was still alive. She had to wear a full body cast for three months, so this is when she started peeing. Her parents encouraged her and they made a special easel so she could paint in bed. She finished her first self-portrait the following year. Frida Kahlo once said, I paint myself because I am often alone, and I am the subject I know best. She then reconnected with Diego Rivera in 1928, asking him to look at her work. They both ended up in a romantic relationship and got married a year later. They were known as the Elephant and the Dove, for obvious reasons. With a very complicated love story, Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo made history together. In 1944, after the death of her father and her growing health problems, Kahlo painted one of her most famous works, The Broken Column. Frida Kahlo was best at expressing her pain. She did this through her surrealistic self-portraits filled with a variety of elements that showed her loneliness and physical feelings. She helped viewers begin to imagine what she was going through. The use of space in the background is a surreal landscape. The texture and volume in the clothing create an almost realistic touch, and the lines that run horizontal and vertical create a dynamic composition. Notice Kahlo's tears streaming down her face and the nails all over her body, representing a pinching pain running through her. You can see her spine as a column, broken into many pieces. She used a lot of symbols in her earlier works as well to not only signify emotions, but also her background and culture. In the self-portrait with Thorin Necklace and Hummingbird, Made in 1940, Kahlo identifies herself with the Mexican culture by using powerful symbology such as a dead hummingbird which hangs around her neck. In Mexican folklore, it is considered a good luck charm for falling in love. The black panther, on the other hand, is a symbol of bad luck and death. The monkey is a symbol of evil. Another interpretation is that the monkey represents her husband, Rivera, because he once gave Kahlo a spider monkey as a gift. This is a very strong suggestion, especially since he has brought her pain in life. In the painting, the monkey is tugging the thorn necklace hard enough to make her bleed. There are so many symbols that can mean so many different things, and this is what she's famous for. This is an even earlier work called The Two Fridas. The painting shows two versions of the artist sitting side by side, both of them with their hearts exposed. The Frida on the left, all in white, has a damaged heart and spots of blood on her clothing. The other one wears bold colored clothing and has an intact heart. These two figures represent an unloved version and a loved version of Kahlo. In 1953, Kahlo received her first solo exhibition in Mexico, but her doctors told her that she could not leave her bed. She was growing more ill each coming day. And do you think she listened? Clever Kahlo didn't technically leave her bed, and she arrived in an ambulance, not missing out on the exhibition's opening. Frida Kahlo died on July 13, 1954, in the same exact house that she grew up in, La Casa Azul. She became even better known during the feminist movement in 1970. She was an icon for women around the world. Estaba confundida cuando la despedida un balde de agua fría sentí que me All right, now that we watched that video, which we were able to learn more about Frida Kahlo and what her life was like, let's look at these two examples of her self-portraits. The first one on the left. This one over here is called Self-Portrait with Thorn Necklace and Hummingbird, which she painted back in 1940. And then the second one we will look at is called The Frame, and this was created two years prior in 1938. And in these two self-portraits, we can see three main characteristics. So the first main characteristic that we see is that Frida Kahlo herself is facing forward and she's in the middle of the picture. So she's looking forward and she's right there in the center. And the second characteristic that we see in her self-portraits is the animals 
or symbols. So usually the animals are, are used as symbols, um, but the animals can also depict depict maybe her pets. So here we have the black jaguar in the background and a black monkey. We also have a black hummingbird tied around her neck. And so up here, we also have two butterflies. So you can see there's a lot of different animals included in this painting. And then in the frame, we have two birds facing each other at the front of the portrait. So the third characteristic that we can notice from her self-portraits are the florals and the leaves she would add to her background or around her self-portrait. So that was because she really loved flowers. You would often find her with flowers in her hair because you love them so much. So here in the frame, she included a lot of bright, beautiful flowers. And then over here on the left, she added these bright, vibrant green leaves in the background. So now that we explore these two paintings a little bit more, we're going to create our own self-portraits based on Frida Kahlo's self-portraits. So some things you need to include in your self-portrait. You're going to draw yourself facing forward in the center of the paper, just like, just like Frida Kahlo did. And then you're going to include leaves or floral designs around your background or around the frame of your drawing. And then you're going to include animals or any significant symbols you would like around your background. And in this example, this person has a puppy. And so they included their puppy. Or if you don't have a pet, you can include a animal that symbolizes something or maybe your favorite animal. And lastly, you're going to grab some colors and color in your self-portrait with bright, vibrant colors, just like Frida Kahlo had done. Now, we can see in this example on the right of a student's example, where she created these four things in the self-portrait that we need. So we need a forward-facing self-portrait in the middle of the painting or the drawing and then we need to add some leaves or florals so this student added a lot of leaves there's also one flower at the top and next is to include any animals or significant symbols and so this person included a puppy and then lastly you're going to color it all in with these bright colors now before we get started go ahead and grab your supplies grab a piece of paper a pencil and something to color with and in this next part i'm going to show you step by step how i created my self-portrait drawing all right now i'm going to show you step by step how i created my self-portrait based on frida kahlo's self-portraits i first have this pencil and paper and i'm going to sketch out my self-portrait so first thing i'm going to do is create a shape and that's going to be where my portrait is in the middle and then around it is my frame so i have this oval shape here and on the edges is the frame of my self-portrait and then here I'm drawing out my facial details, including the face shape. So I have the circle shape for the head. I added the ears, nose, and now the glasses. And I'm just making it look more like me. And you're going to make it look more like you because this is a self-portrait. So make sure you draw yourself, not anyone else. And then I added my eye shape and then the eyeball in the middle and a big smile to show how happy I am. And then I added my hair. If you have a different hair style, different hair texture, go ahead and draw your hairstyle however that looks. So you might have straight hair, curly hair. I have my hair just going up like it usually is. And then I added my neck and shirt. And so you'll only see the head and shoulders. You wouldn't see 
much of the bottom part of your body. After I sketch out my portrait, I'm going to go around in the edge of around my frame and draw in all of my floral and leaf decals. So I added some leaf shapes and I also added some different kinds of flowers going around my whole frame. And I'm going to do that all the way around and that's just going to be for my drawing part. So once I have all my flowers and leaves going all the way around, I'm going to go back inside of the shape and add a little animal. And I have a pet dog, so I'm going to draw my poodle right over here on my left shoulder. And if you have a pet or a different animal you want to put in your corner, you can do whatever animal you want. Now I'm going to grab a black marker and I'm going to outline around where my self-portrait is in the middle. So not around the frame, I'm just going to use colors around the frame, but I want to outline where my self-portrait is. That way you can clearly see the focus of the picture is my self-portrait. So I'm going in with a darker line. So if you don't have a black marker, you can still use something darker than that pencil that you used earlier. Uh, it could be a black pen or a sharpie or a black color pencil or a black crayon. Anything that's a darker color you could use. And you see here I'm just tracing right over the lines that I want for my self-portrait around my face, glasses, shirt, and also my dog. So by the end, uh, the middle of your self-portrait, including your pet, should be all the way outlined in. Once you're done with that, I'm going to go in and color in all of my details in the outside around my frame. First, I grab just a screen marker to outline where all my leaves are. And you can grab whatever coloring material you have to start outlining and coloring in the details around your frame. So for the flowers, I grabbed this red color and I actually shaded it in with the red so I have this really bright red color with the markers. But again, you can color in with whatever coloring materials you have and a different color if you don't want the colors that I used. So I went ahead and I shaded everything in with some color pencils that I had. And so you're going to color in your self-portrait all the way in, including the background and everything in between and your skin, hair, shirt, and all of those flowers. And make sure it's all colored in. Once you are done, make sure you take a picture of it like I did here and you turn it into me. I hope to see everyone's work by next week. Don't forget to turn it in on my website.